Well, a few weeks ago, conservative talk radio host Rush Limbaugh announced that he's fighting cancer. And shortly thereafter, President Donald Trump presented him with the Medal of Freedom, inspiring, of course, ripples of antagonistic sneers among many leftists, including CNN's so-called reporter Jim Acosta, who implied that Rush is racist. There's a funny thing about that, because Russia's producer, Bo Snurdly, who's black, challenged Acosta to produce any evidence of this. And guess what? Now we're still waiting. Hi, everyone. I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. Well, they've done it again. Smear laden big media leftists and politicians have once more focused on skin color and surface characteristics instead of merit, heart, and character. And when it comes to a man's heart and character, listeners to Russia's massive talk radio show know he has exhibited tons of both. Yet, just after Donald Trump gave the cancer-fighting Rush the Medal of Freedom, CNN's Jim Acosta decided it'd be classy to say this. And while, yes, he was uh, trying to make appeals to the African-American community, it can't be forgotten that he was awarding the Medal of Freedom to Rush Limbaugh, who has a history of making uh, derogatory comments about African-Americans. Acosta, that guy, man, I mean, he just acts like such a buffoon so much. It's just sad, man. <sighs> man. And while many leftists who don't listen to Rush might clap like trained seals upon hearing that smear, the man who's likely heard more of Rush's show than anyone save Rush recognized Acosta's statement for the unwarranted falsehood it was. That man is James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snurdly, who's produced Rush's show for more than three decades. And he tweeted almost immediately this. Don't believe at Acosta can respond. There are no facts to support his slanderous assertions. Those facts do not exist. At CNN and at Acosta are ignoring my direct challenge for them to produce the list of supposed history of racism because they can't. That was February 5th, and Acosta has yet to respond. And it's no surprise. This is Rush Limbaugh, the man who single-handedly resurrected talk radio after President Reagan was able to end the unconstitutional FCC mandate that all broadcast stations air any opinion that might disagree with editorial content on a particular station. This misnamed Orwellian so-called fairness doctrine was pure anti-speech fascism, and it allowed the left-biased pop media so-called news programs to pepper those programs with leftist doctrine all the time. Well, this change was what later offered Fox News an audience desperate to get away from those dinosaur news networks, and this change gave Rush a chance. Years before Fox, Rush took his local radio show and went national. And sure enough, people were starving for the alternative that he presented. Of course, as leftist media and politicians spotted his success, they threw brickbats at him to the point where in 1995, during a speech, Bill Clinton tried to associate conservative talk radio with the Oklahoma City bombing. We hear so many loud and angry voices in America today whose sole goal seems to be to try to keep some people as paranoid as possible and the rest of us all torn up and upset with each other. They spread hate. They leave the impression that, by their very words, that violence is acceptable. You ought to see, I'm sure you are now seeing the reports of some things that are regularly said over the airwaves in America today. Well, people like that who want to share our freedoms must know that their bitter words can have consequences. When they talk of hatred, we must stand against them. When they talk of violence, we must stand against them. When they say things that are irresponsible, 
that may have egregious consequences, we must call them on it. And since he became a national figure, leftists all around the world have tried to portray Rush as some sort of Archie Bunker, a caricature, the epitome of the leftist view of what conservatives stand for. Rush Limbaugh, today's worst person in the world. They portrayed his mockery of identity politics as racist. Well, guess what? Snurdly, a black man had enough of this when Acosta's attack became known. And why didn't Acosta mention Rush's work with a mixed race pro baseball team for years, or his 30-year association with Snurdly, or the fact that for years Rush's fill-in go-to host was economist Walter Williams, a black man whose free market ideas were essential to Rush Limbaugh's program. Look, the fact that someone is ill doesn't necessarily insulate a person from justified criticism. But one need not agree with Rush on every issue, or even any issue, to know he's not prejudiced and to appreciate his method of exposing absurdity by being absurd. His mockery of identity politics could be depicted as racist by those who want to attack him, but that would be unfair and expose sheer ignorance of what Rush has done so well for so long. Russia's fans know he stands for merit, heart, and fair treatment, even when he makes mistakes. If only one could say the same for Jim Acosta. Best wishes to you, Rush. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, don't forget, if you want some of our awesome fashions, head to mrc-store.com. You can find this great t-shirt and many more if you too are in search of real news. And please do visit mrctv.org. And if you're over on YouTube, I'll be hopping over into the comments section very soon. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.